So we got a question from the class. Bilal Bilal says, can you make a video about some of your favorite typefaces slash fonts, preferably free? Yes, I can. Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist and designer based in Southern California and I am here to inform you with some of my preferences. The things that I choose to use on a regular basis so that you guys can know and do. Uh, don't do what I do. Do what you do. But, you know, these, is the t these are the tools. So I'm gonna lay it out for you real quick here. I'm gonna give you five of my favorite typefaces that I use, and I'm gonna give you five free ones that I happen to like a lot. I probably don't use as much, but they're still available, and I will call them all out for you now. Not before I say, hey, if you appreciate these videos, this content, do me a favor, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, comment below with the things you dug or didn't dig, or you have other questions of your own, and then if you get a chance, make sure you hit that bell right over there next to that subscribe button, wherever it is. Go hit that so you never miss a thing. Oh, and one more thing, share it with your friends. All right, let's get into it. The number one typeface that I use on a regular basis, and I've actually called this out a couple times in different videos, number one typeface, it is not Arial. It is the big brother. Before Arial, there was the king of all modern typefaces. That, my ladies and gentlemen, is Helvetica. I don't care what anybody has to say about Helvetica. Boring, old, it's ubiquitous. Sure, it is those things. If you don't know how to use it. I'm calling you out if that's the way you feel because let me tell you something about Helvetica. Number one, it is a very, very well-designed typeface. It is almost perfect. When you lay it out in a standard, form in anything. Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, Word. It fits perfectly almost every time. I very rarely have to nudge and, and kern and, and fix too much because it is so well designed. Another reason I like it is because it looks identifiable at a distance. Identifiability, if that's a word, if something is identifiable to somebody else, then that gets them comfortable. That gets them open-minded to looking at what I'm sharing. Because let's be honest, some of the stuff that I post, some of the things that I share, some of the designs that go with my type, uh, a little bit radical at times, a little bit crazy, a little bit wild. And so I use Helvetica as like a grounding point, as like the, the rock solid thing on the page mixed with all this chaos going on in the background. That is why it is my number one choice. It's the thing I use on a regular basis. If you've seen any of my cover photos, except for maybe a couple recently, they're almost always Helvetica. I'm actually gonna split my number two choice because I use two different serif typefaces pretty much interchangeably. That is Baskerville and Bodoni. It really comes down to uh, what intent I am trying to get across. And I use them almost, like I go, if I go to look for a serif typeface, I will look at those two first. And sometimes it's because maybe I want to use an italic version and I like Bodoni better. And sometimes I like Baskerville because it looks a little bit more modern than Bodoni does. I look at those two as almost universal. They're almost like slightly different versions of each other that I just kind of like almost consider them one. If you put them side by side, I know they don't look a lot alike. They don't look perfectly alike, but when I'm going to consider using a serifed typeface, I will look at both of them at the same time. Those two first above all others. So call it 2A and 2B. Number three is a script typeface. You can't swing a protractor without hitting a script typeface these days, but one of my favorite that I'm currently using is a more modern typeface called Thirsty. I don't remember the name of the font house, but if you look it up uh, wherever you get your fonts, You'll probably find it. It's not free, but it is still very cool. Not too fancy like some script fonts could be. It's not wedding typeface by any stretch of imagination. It does have a little bit more of a masculine feel just because of the nature of what who I am as a designer and what I create. It works better than anything that's too fancy. Number four would be my favorite narrow typeface and that would be DIN. I like DIN mostly because it just seems to work really well in situations largely when I use Helvetica and then I want to put something narrow in there. I don't like Helvetica condensed a lot. That's, that's not one of my favorite parts of that typeface. I like DIN because it's built to be narrow. Anytime I have to stack a bunch of type next to each other, like poster or poster style design, where everything's like tight, right? And I need to get a lot of big words into a small space, then I will go to DIN almost every single time. There are others that I use 
uh, like, uh, what is it, League Gothic, I think is another one. I think that's the name of it. I could be wrong, but that's that's what I'm, something like that. Din is really the go-to, it's the main go-to narrow font. And number five would be my most favorite decorative typeface, and that would be Flyer Fonts by House Industries. This is an older, much, much older typeface from House Industries, one of the first ones that they ever came out with. I have been using it since probably the late 90s. I've had it ever since then. It came out, I bought it immediately. I probably paid back then, I don't know, 20 bucks or something for it. And I've used it ever since because, number one, because it's punk rock as fuck. And number two, it just, it, there's a bunch of different variations. It's really kind of like 10 different typefaces in one and each one is a, is a little bit different, but it takes this punk rock poster aesthetic to the next level. I don't use them all. There's only really maybe three or four that I use on a regular basis, but I do turn to it on a, on pretty consistently. It's almost always in my recently used within Affinity Photo. Honorable mention would be Fractor as a black letter typeface. I don't use black letter all that often, but every once in a while I like to throw it in there because it gives you that kind of like that punchy little, again, a little bit punk rock. It has a very heavy feel. There, there's not a whole lot of times when you have the need for that kind of typeface, but Fractor is definitely my favorite black letter typeface. Okay, now my five favorite free Google fonts. Now, why would I use Google fonts as opposed to any other free fonts out there? Well, it's honestly, it's because if I'm going to use like a free font from Da Font or whatever font place that gives away free fonts, you usually only get a small segment of that free font. For instance, a typeface designer may create a complete typeface set that has nine different faces. Then what they'll do is they'll take one or two of those and they'll put them up on dafont.com or wherever. And there's usually, if you want to do more with it, there's like licenses that you have to, you know, kind of fulfill to make sure that you have property rights over that legally. And if we're gonna do the right thing, then do the right thing and either just buy that typeface outright or pay for the license. But if you really truly want free typefaces without having to worry about any of that commercial aspect, go to fonts.google.com. I got air in my mouth. And then download these five. Keeping the same format we did before. Number one, my favorite sans serif typeface from Google, and that is Roboto. Again, pretty straightforward. Not quite as good as Helvetica, but definitely better than Arial. It is a good, solid, modern, sans serif typeface that works in a lot of different places. It can work as titling, it can work as a, a body copy in a magazine. When I worked on a magazine, I used Roboto as one of my typefaces and it looked great. And I would use it any day of the week if I didn't have Helvetica already. Now, clarification. I'm not talking about Roboto Slab. Roboto Slab is a good, chunky, slab serif typeface, and I've used it before, but it it tends to look a little bit Tonka Truck to me. And that's okay in certain circumstances, but it's not as universal as some other slabs that you can get from Google. I don't use a whole lot of slab serif typefaces anymore, but if I did, I could dip to Roboto slab, but I might try and find something else instead. So honorable mention under sans serif typefaces in Google would be Montserrat. Number two favorite Google typeface is Meriwether as my serif choice. I just dig it. I don't know what it is. There's something just aesthetically pleasing to me with Meriwether. Also, as far as serif typefaces go, Meriwether has four different weights. I think uh, maybe some others have maybe five, but most of the serif typefaces in Google have like two or three different weights, and I'd like to have a little bit more choice than that. Really what you have with Meriwether is a regular, an italic, a bold, and a reg bold italic. If you can't work with that, then you can't work with it at all, so I think you'd be okay with just those four. Honorable mention under serif typefaces would be Newton or maybe PT Serif. Number three would be my favorite script typeface, and I use that term loosely because there's not a ton of really traditional script typefaces in Google uh, typefaces, Google fonts. Great Vibes is actually a really nice typeface. And if you needed a typeface that would work across the middle of the road of most of your scripting needs, <laughs> whatever that means, if you needed something that worked in a lot of different circumstances, then Great Vibes would be a good choice. Not quite as decorative as, say, something like Snell Roundhand, but it's not as weird as some of the other handwriting typefaces that they have on Google. Some of those handwriting ones are a little bit weird to me. They just look like they're trying too hard to be done with hand. If you really need a hand-drawn typeface, 
then draw it yourself. Honorable mention would be Rochester, not necessarily the best. It, it, it would seem like it would be a very specific need for that one, but I don't know, it's not bad looking. Number four best Google font for narrow typefaces is hands down Archivo. Archivo? I'm not sure. Archivo Narrow is hands down the best narrow typeface that they have. In fact, uh, I would almost use it maybe sometimes in replace of DIN because it just kind of has a, it's a little bit more modern. When you put them side by side, most people probably wouldn't see it. Maybe it's just in my head, but it just kind of feels a little bit newer than DIN, but Archivo, narrow comes with eight different weights so there shouldn't be any problem finding exactly what you need there honorable mention would be pt sans narrow it only has two different typefaces really kind of just a regular and an italic not bad it works it's it, it's good if you need to get a lot of words into a body copy without making it difficult to read too small. Number five, my favorite display typeface from Google would be Playfair because it is a variable typeface. When you bring it into places like Adobe Photoshop or Affinity Photo or InDesign or Designer or wherever you wanna bring it, it will adjust to whatever you decide to do to it. So if you go and bring it in and you hit the bold button, which is normally a no-no, it will go bold. If you hit italics, it will go italics. If you go italics uh, bold, it will go naturally to that. It adapts, it is variable in that way. So you have a lot of different options there. Additionally, and I'm gonna add this to it, even though technically it is a secondary typeface, there is another version called Playfair Display SC. That one's a little bit more like headline style or if you wanted to put up a, a sign on your walls or something like that. It just adds a little bit of a different flair on the same typeface. Honorable mention in the display category would be Abril or Abril Fatface. And it sounds terrible, but it's actually a really great typeface. There's only one weight and you're gonna have to use it in a very particular circumstance, but it's fun in, and it's probably incredibly popular right now because if you look at anything that you see on Instagram or or Behance or Dribble, you've probably seen this typeface before. Maybe getting a little bit overused, but I still think it's something that can stand the test of time and people will be able to appreciate over time. So there you go, that is my favorite five typefaces and five free typefaces that you can go check out. I will link to every single one of those in the description so that you can go and have some fun with it. You can get the free ones if you want, or you can go pay for a typeface here and there. And I wanna talk about that briefly for one second. We are designers and we get paid for our work. Somebody wants our designs, we ask them to pay for it. And we use these typefaces on a regular basis. I paid for Helvetica. It was hellified expensive, but I paid for it. That's why I use it a lot. Did I get some free typefaces? Yeah, absolutely. Do I use those? Yeah, sometimes. Did I bootleg some? I refuse to incriminate myself. But here's the thing. You get paid for your work. These people should get paid for their work. Google pays people to design typefaces for them. So those people did get paid. But if you go and download a free font from Defont or one of the other places, or if you bootleg a font from somebody, I know they're expensive. Helvetica is like, what, a thousand dollars or something like? I mean, that's ridiculous, it's stupid now. It didn't used to be that much, but it is now. I get that it would be difficult to buy that if you didn't have access through your computer already. The thing is, is that these typographers, they put this stuff out there with hopes that somebody will have a good conscience and pay them for their effort. So if you are using a typeface that you downloaded off of some free place and you use that typeface on a regular basis, maybe it's a good idea to go find that type designer because they work really hard on that thing. Maybe you're making money on it and it would be a good idea to just say, hey, look, man, I made a few bucks. Here's some back at you. Thank you for letting me use your typeface. Maybe it's a man, maybe it's a woman. I am being, uh, I say man in the universal term of me saying, calling everybody man. Typeface design is gender neutral and so is your money. So go pay somebody for that thing that you're using on a regular basis. All right, that's it. That's it, I'm done. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you go and find new typefaces. If you have a favorite typeface that you wanna share with me, do so in the comments below. And while you're on your way down to the comments section, make sure you hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell button so you never miss any one of my videos. Thank you very much, folks. I appreciate you so much. And if you have other questions you would like me to address, please do so by asking them in the comments below and I will get to it and maybe I'll feature yours next time. And until next time, remember, be good today, be better tomorrow. See ya. While you're down there, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe, 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 subscribe.